have to like go on my tippy toes to be in the shot with you. Every couple of months we have to deal with visas and immigration and Mexico unfortunately has stopped issuing uh, emergency COVID uh, extensions for a visa so we had to leave the country and come back for a visa run and uh, where we are our options were pretty limited it was either Cuba or Guatemala. As of December 2020 and January 2021 we still couldn't get into Belize. The ports of Belize were still and are still closed to cruising traffic. Yeah. You can fly into Belize. You can stay at a certain kind of hotel there, or you can charter a sailboat. We saw a couple of them in Belizean waters. Um, but you cannot uh, come with your boat from Mexico or Guatemala, for instance, and check into Belize. Unless you have an emergency, like we found out from our friends. Yes, unless there's an emergency situation, which is in the end what we ended up doing because we had to make some repairs on the boat. Yes, so we found that a little bit uh, frustrating that we couldn't get into Belize. It would have been the simplest, fastest uh, way for us to get Seda's boat to a nearby country. It is the closest uh, location that we could have sailed to. Cuba and Guatemala had kind of a similar COVID requirement. When you arrived, they wanted to test, or if you didn't have a test, you could get one when you arrive. If in the unlikely situation, we would test positive for COVID in Cuba, we were kind of unsure about what the situation would be if that would happen. Whereas in Guatemala, where we would just have to remain on the boat, boat for two weeks and be careful. Cuba was a little more complicated for the uh, uh, concept of coming back. We weren't sure if we would have to get a flight back, for instance. The cost of flights has really dramatically increased over the last couple of months. So we ended up going to Guatemala. We were waiting for uh, the northerly to start blowing up here in Mexico to help us against the famously strong Gulf Stream current that comes a lot up along and the And then when we came back, we were praying that the Norley would stop <laughs> because we got hammered on the way back. The trusty compass was giving me my heading. And the depth sounder was reliably letting me know that I was sticking to about the 100 foot depth mark, where the powerful current was affecting the boat a little bit less. And Robbie, most importantly, was enjoying some good fishing at this depth. The wind was on and off throughout the day, and we rolled in and rolled out the Genoa accordingly. Hey, 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 hey. Robbie. these intertwined so much. Once the Genoa was out, we noticed that the trim of the sail could be improved as we were still getting the wind on the nose. Robbie could bring the car backwards to improve the sail's aerodynamic shape, but Seda would have to luff the sail a little bit to give him some slack. Yes, like this, into the wind. Yes. And the, and the sail starts to flap a bit like this and Robbie can loose, make okay. this one loose and then back 210 on course to 210 good Some small squalls set in around Tulum, obscuring our possible views of the famous Mayan ruins located along the water's edge here.
But the rain had its upside, and it certainly didn't discourage us from continuing on our usual boatly activities. No salt, even free bath, free shower. <laughs> and I was thankful for our somewhat waterproof navigation gear as we followed along the outline of Punta Yuyum. Between spots of rain, we sang Christmas carols for the cruiser's Feliz Navidad video. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> We're not drunk enough, that's a trick. Feliz Navidad. I think for singing the song, you have to be very drunk. Feliz Navidad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prospero <laughs> During the wet spell, I also managed to fall down the companionway ladder and sprain my big toe. Does one look a little fatter than the other to you? I wasn't the only one to injure my toe that day. How's your toe? My toe is okay. It's just bad since I smashed it as well this morning. We had a double toe smash up. Yeah, we both, we both got our toes today. Everything was extremely fresh and crisp, including the minced fish patties that we enjoyed so much that we would eat them twice that day. The northerly wind only began to fill in as we approached a place called Punta Allen or Xian Can, at which point we were ready to take a break at one of these expansive sandy-bottomed anchorages. We made our tack into the bay, between the invisible reefs, chased in by approaching rain clouds and accelerating wind speeds. We knew that the relatively large distance between the anchoring spot and the exit would mean a long and salty beat back outside into the wind tomorrow, if we wished to take advantage of the northerlies in the upcoming days. But it seemed well worth it to get one full night of sleep without constantly having to hand steer. It's like a seabird. He'll tell you when land is near. Joko, stay in the cockpit. Come here, come here. Stay in the cockpit. Eel, good boy. What are you looking at? She's like, you know what? Piss off. We had to be doing the right thing because dolphins ushered us in towards Cayo Culebra, or Snake Key, so we knew it was meant to be. You're always going the right way if you're following dolphins, right? Yeah. We settled in behind the Snake Island, perfectly sheltered from the northern wind, and continued making fresh fish patties. Robbie's secret recipe includes lots of freshly fine chopped ginger and lime zest. Abby, you're sticking out your tongue. 
salt, pepper, garlic, green onion, and a pinch of curry powder, and then you dip them into the frying oil. Not too long though, so that they come out very light and juicy. The next morning we hauled up anchor, wishing we had the dinghy to explore the shore and generally more time to hang around, but we had already checked out of Mexico, of course, and our wind was blowing. We needed to make these free from fuel miles as we pushed against the Gulf Stream. Right here is one of the Gulf Stream's most potent points. The beat up and out of the bay was just as long and wet as we expected. But Sea Rooster is a big strong boat, and she handled it well. We were all pretty comfortable. Well, except maybe the cat and the dog. As we exited the pass, we began to ease off slowly. We rolled out the Genoa, and Robbie noticed that the furling line was disintegrating. What line? The line from the roller for the boat, because only the core is exposed. Ah. Oh, sh**. Oof. We munched on date bars and hoped that no other lines would be breaking soon. Seda bravely cooked up some lunch in the galley while the seas remained washing machiney. And as we turned more and more downwind, we would need the help of the spinnaker pole to hold the Genoa open. But the pole would not go up without a fight. First it came down on Robbie's arm with a thud when the pin holding it to the mast broke, and then it knocked him on the head, nearly unconscious, when a cleat failed. With a lot of swearing and pain that we unfortunately didn't get on film, it was in place and we were on course again. Very hard to steer all day. Now a little bit easy. For our direction, for our course, a little bit easy. Robbie attempted to get some shut eye first. I listened to some Duran Duran lullaby to try and sleep. Ooh. 
just as I lie down here for my morning nap after having been up, I'd say maybe I had about half an hour of sleep last evening. We had a lot of squalls. We had a lot of breaking waves. A very wet and wonderful time last night. I had flying fish hitting me. Cat came out and was suicidal and tried to jump overboard and had to throw her back in. And Seda's been really good. She's been making Ravi a coffee in the morning and uh, I get a tea. Choco finally went for his first pee pee on the deck, which was a monumental occasion because he's been holding his piss in for the last two days. He's used to being on boats, just not being on board for such a long period of time. So it's been good to have this first voyage with Choco. I don't know if this will be audible because I've got the engine shaft in the background here still spinning. We we haven't blocked off the engine shaft because uh, apparently there's some problem if we tried if we try to put it in reverse and then try to put it into gear. Ooh, big waves. And then try to put it into gear when starting up the engine. There's some problems so that's the soundtrack of this voyage so far. When the sun was finally high enough for Ravi to let out the lures, we were officially in Belizean waters. Oh, big object in the water there. The Belize dolphin pod came running over the waves to meet us and accompanied us until the main shipping channel that leads into Belize City appeared. About halfway down this country's coast, this is pretty much the first entry that can be made in behind their protective reef that is wide and deep enough for larger vessels to come in. Joff's Key, or Goff's Key, appeared in front of us like a hallucinatory mirage caused by lack of sleep. While we were unable to go to shore because we would not be able to trek into Belize, of course, we pulled up right to this micro island to drop the hook and to make some repairs. We checked out what might be causing the vibrations in the shaft. Seda would probably need to replace her cutlass bearing, which keeps the shaft snugly in place. We would need to start sewing the mainsail as well, which had started developing some tears over the course of this passage so far. <laughs> But how long could we really stay here and undertake these repairs before the authorities would show up demanding we leave or worse? <laughs> <laughs> 